This is the story of Paradise Falls. But to properly tell the story, we must first start by traveling southwest of the Everglow National Campground. After following the road west for quite some time, we see a billboard off to the left, near to a ruined bus. But as we creep close, we hear a Protectron hiding behind a car. After looting the Protectron, we can examine this bus. The rubber on the wheels have long since rotted away. Off to the west is a bus stop, standing beneath a giant billboard. But this billboard doesn't have the typical advertisements we've come to know and love from the Capital Wasteland. This one says, Lamplight Caverns. It's got a cartoon of a mole wearing a mining hat. Cute. Looking south-southwest, we see a bunch of ribbons, banners, and streamers still hanging all these years later. Creeping closer, we see a sculpture sticking out of a rock face, and it looks like that mole wearing the mining hat we saw on the billboard. Beneath it are strings and strings of still-lit Christmas lights, and nearby, we find another ruined bus. We also see a few cars parked in the parking lot. These buses and cars must have come to visit Lamplight Caverns. Nearby is a tiny shack. Heading inside, we see that the safe has long been looted. We find a few supplies, some sugar bombs we'll save for Murphy's bombing run, and three ammo containers at the top of a shelf. Stepping outside, we can read the sign on this shack. Lamplight Caverns. Gifts. Crafts. Fun. This must have been the ticketing booth and gift shop. But it's getting dark. The stars are already out. We need to find a place for shelter. Facing west-northwest, we see a door down a hill. A door that leads into lamplight caverns. On the other side of the door, we see this string of Christmas lights lining a pathway. It snakes into the hillside until it opens up into a large cavern. Here we see a stop sign and a scrap wall. The scrap wall has some words on it. Visit lamplight caverns. But then we see some graffiti. Don't visit Lamplight Caverns. No mungos. What's a mungo? It's like the cousin of a mango? Turning around, we see another sign here. Mungo land that way, the way we came. Stepping closer. Hold it right there, lady. Don't take another step or we'll blow your fucking head off. Whoa, kiddo, what's with the language? I'm a friend. You're big, and I don't have any big friends. You better just go out the way you came in. You're kidding me, right? I ain't kidding. You're not supposed to be here, so you better leave. What is this place? This is Little Lamplight. We live here, and we don't need no mungos messing it up. So just take a hike. Tell me more about Little Lamplight. Why would I tell you anything? God, you're dumb. Who are you? I'm McCready. I run Little Lamplight because they made me the mayor, and I don't like strangers or mungos. Hey, it's late. I'm tired. I need a place to sleep. Can I come in? Hell no! No mungos allowed! Alright, what's a mungo? You are mungo! You big people. You're all tall and clumsy. Bunch of mungos and we don't need nothing to do with any of you. Oh, okay. Well, how can I get you to trust me? Why should I trust you? I got no reason to. You mungos are nothing but trouble. I ain't gonna let what happened to Sammy and Squirrel happen to anyone else. Why? What happened to Sammy and Squirrel? Them and Penny got themselves caught. By mungos, just like you. Slavers from Paradise Falls. I told them to watch out, but the stupid kids didn't listen. What if I go and help Sammy and the others? Then will you trust me? You do that? Maybe. If you can bring them back, I might let you in. And with that, we get the quest, Rescue from Paradise Falls. But Paradise Falls is a long walk from here. We need a place to sleep right now. We have two options to convince McCready to let us into Little Lamplight before we complete his quest. We can pass a speech check to say, Oh, come on. I'm a nice gal, really. May I please come in? Well, okay. But you better not be lying or else we'll shoot you. Or if we have the Child at Heart perk, we can say, You know what? Your face looks like my butt. Oh, yeah? You must like having such a good-looking butt. He then has the same response to both of these options. We can say, I bet you like looking at butts, don't you? Or, yeah, well, at least it doesn't smell as bad as you do. <laughs> You're pretty funny for a mungo. Why don't you come on in? With that, McCready opens the gate. The first time we enter Little Lamplight, 
we overhear a conversation taking place right on the other side. Happy birthday, Sticky. Sorry I missed your party. Yeah, me too. Sorry. There's nothing happy about it. This is the worst day of my life. It's time to go. You know the rules. Watch it. The rules are stupid. You're a mungo now. You gotta leave. Maybe I can stay just a little longer? Bye, Sticky. Yeah, bye, Sticky. Don't just stand there. Get out of here already. With that, this Sticky character runs off and the children disperse. I wonder what that was all about. But McCready is still at his post. We can walk up the steps to his guard post to learn more about this place from the foul-mouthed little boy. Look, I don't just let any bitch into my town and I'm taking a risk making an exception for you. So, you're welcome in my town, at least until you start screwing up. Once that bullshit starts, you're out on your own again. Sure, if you've got the adult-sized stones to stop me. Just give it a shot, Mongo. You'll see plenty of my adult-sized stones when I'm pissing on your grave. Don't worry, I'm not planning on starting any trouble. Good. Better stay that way, Mongo. How do you keep this place organized? Organized? Have you walked around this place? It's pure anarchy, and I wouldn't have it any other fucking way. We can't all stay here forever, so we've all got to leave eventually. And there's not much to look forward to out there. So we have a good time while we're here. And the occasional ruthless little bastard like me makes sure it doesn't fall apart for the other kids. How did you get to be in charge of this place? It's not that complex. Any kid can say they want to be mayor here. It's just that most don't want to bother with the responsibility of leading. Most of the time, they last until the kids get tired of them. Then they get kicked out on their ass by the new mayor. One only lasted five minutes. Of course, I've kept this place going strong for three years. To most kids, that makes me mayor for fucking life. Fine by me, I say. You said everyone has to leave eventually? People change when they grow up, and we don't trust mungos living down here. So we leave for a place called Big Town before we get too old. At least that's the line Joseph teaches. But really, we simply don't have enough space or food for everyone to stay here forever. So, I've got to exile some to avoid ruining the whole town. It's a fucking hard, brutal choice to make, but that's the way we stay alive. Can you give me directions? What do I look like, your tour guide? Sorry, I'll be going now. Okay, see you later, pal. We get to meet McCready here again ten years from now, as an adult during the events of Fallout 4. He grows up to lead a hard life. I did a video on it, and you can learn the full story of McCready by clicking here. But now we better understand what was going on when we first entered. That sticky character must have grown up, and therefore he was exiled from Little Lamplight. We see two paths forward. There's a path to the north, and we see three signs pointing that way. Souvenirs, Spelunkers, and the Great Chamber. There's also a little shack off to the east. We'll head there first. Heading towards the shack, we see a sign outside marked Essentials. And as we enter, we learn that before the war, this was the little lamplight office building. Inside, we see a few rooms lining this hallway. The first right leads to a bit of a classroom. And here, we meet Bumble. Whoa, you're big. You must be the biggest kid here. I'm the littlest kid. My real name's Betty, but mostly I get called Bumble. What do you call, big kid? We have options that we don't otherwise get with all of the children here if we have the child at heart perk. We have two options with Bumble here. We can say, that's none of your business, squirt. Oh, okay. Bye. In which case, she calls us Mungo from here on out. Or we can say, sometimes people call me the Vault Dweller. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Did you come from the Vault? I heard there's monsters down there. Eclair told me once. One of them. They got him and bit him right in the face, and that's why he's only got one eye. But you don't look like a monster, and I don't think you'd bite anyone in the face. You look like a nice vault dweller. One of the kids got bit in the face by a vault dweller? From which vault? Is there one close to here? Why do they call you Bumble? It's just a name, okay? Not my fault I knocked stuff over. Lucy says I still got a lot of growing to do. Can you give me directions? I don't know. I still get lost sometimes. Things are really big. Bye bye Bumble. Bye bye Vault Dweller. The Fallout 3 official strategy guide says that she's six years old, and she's also one of the most naive children in Lamplight. But sitting down in a desk nearby is Lucy. You're new, and you're too big to be a resident. Who are you? 
I'm new in town, and that's all you need to know. Oh, is it? Well, I'm Lucy, and I'm the doctor in town. From the sound of it, I'll be seeing a lot of you. Or your work. Or we can pass a child at heart check to say Mayor McCready let me in. I don't want to cause any problems. Well, it's good that you're safe in here now. The waste can be dangerous, although you look like you've done all right out there. I'm Lucy, and I'm the closest thing we've got to a doctor around here. If you get yourself into trouble, see if you can drag yourself back here. How do you keep healthy here? There's always one big sister or another who knows her way around a compress and a sewing needle, so we take care of most of the little scrapes. And way back when, someone figured out that some of the plants and fungus around here absorb radiation. The little ones don't like to eat their veggies, but they don't like to be sick either. So we get by. That sounds like some pretty useful fungus. It is, especially for dealing with the low-level radiation we all get from the water. The fungus just soaks it right up. But it doesn't help the rickets that keep hitting the younger lamp lighters. Believe it or not, I can make a treatment for that from extract of buff out. Actually, if you can talk McCready into it, I'd be glad to trade some fungus for buff out, but he'd have to say it was okay. So you're the only doctor in this whole place? Well, we all know the basics. Combat first aid, you know? But I've got the most experience at the tough stuff. Bumble's been learning the most about the more complex parts of cutting and sewing. People tease her, but she's got a steady hand. Of course, now she just needs to learn what you do and don't cut. Can you give me directions? Well, where to? Where can I find a doctor? Yeah, that's me. I'm only on duties when I'm in the office. Do you have a trader in town? There's a souvenir shop just north of the entrance. That's where Knickknack sells whatever else we can't use. Check there. Where can I get some food? Right here. Welcome to our fungus pools. Eat up. All of the kids in Lamplight have the same dialogue when we ask them for directions, so we'll skip that option from here on out. Lucy here can cure our radiation for a hundred caps, and she can heal our wounds. But sadly, she doesn't have an inventory. I'll let you get back to work, Lucy. Thanks. Hopefully, it'll just be skin, knees, and bloody noses today. The Fallout 3 official strategy guide tells us more about Lucy. She was taught medicine from a bigger kid named Red, who has since turned Mungo and left Little Lamplight. One day, Mayor McCready was injured in a cave-in, but her medical knowledge saved his life. After that event, she's had a bit of a soft spot for McCready, and the two of them spend a lot of time together. She tempers his brash instincts with a measure of caution. This appears to be a bit of a school. We see a bunch of school desks all over the place and a teacher's desk. Backing out of this room, we can turn down the hallway and enter the first door on the right. Here we see a bunch of storage. Suitcases, ammo boxes, but they're all set to owned. And I don't want to go about stealing these. However, on a countertop nearby, we find two journal entries that we can loot. They're both the journal entries of Carrie Delaney. These are holotapes, and we'll start by listening to entry number one. My name is Carrie Delaney. I teach fourth grade at the Early Dawn Elementary School in Washington, D.C. Yesterday, October 23rd, 2077, half the school went on a field trip to Lamplight Caverns. We were packing up to leave when... when everything went crazy. The cave started shaking, the lights went out, the kids started screaming, my God! Mr. Pollock went outside to see what was going on. When he came back in, he told us what he saw. Clouds. Mushroom clouds. It's finally happened. The end of the world. Now we know why we saw those two buses parked outside. Those were the very buses that brought the kids from the school here to Lamplight Caverns for their field trip. She says that they were from Early Dawn Elementary. We explored the ruins of Early Dawn Elementary School when we visited the GNR building in my video on Three Dog, which you can watch here. There's sadly no lore left of the school, and honestly not much left of the school. Listening to tape number two... We're all okay. If you can call being stuck in a cave with 82 terrified kids okay. Alive, anyway. I don't know what the hell we're going to do. It's been four days. Claudia went out this morning to look around and never came back. Then Mr. Cobb went out to look for her and he never came back. So now there's only me, two other teachers, two of the parents who were chaperoning, and a few of the cavern staff. And all these poor kids. 
We've got enough food and water to last for a while, I guess. But after that, I just don't know. We can't stay in here forever. Can we? 82 kids? Stuck in these caves? Oh, what a nightmare. How did they feed 82 kids? I can't imagine that all of them survived. But that was 200 years ago. How do we explain this cavern still having kids? Especially if Mungos get expelled from the society when they become adults. Well, the only explanation I can come up with is that the Wasteland has no shortage of orphans. Perhaps the lucky ones find their way here, where they can at least join this tiny society. That said, there is evidence that some of the older kids have children. The Fallout 3 official strategy guide tells us that Lucy, the doctor, was born here. Either some of the older kids as teenagers before they got kicked out procreated, or maybe a pregnant scavenger happened by, gave birth, and then abandoned Lucy. Either way, it does look like some of the kids are born here. With the offices explored, we can head back outside, and this time follow the signs down the only path forward. After a while, we come to a fork in the road. There's a souvenir sign pointing to the right, and to the left we find Spelunkers and the Great Hall. Let's explore souvenirs first. The path winds through the rock and then brings us up until opening in a large chamber. Here we see some sort of shack on stilts, and beneath it is a bathroom. Heading inside, we find our first adult skeleton. There's one by the water fountains, and then if we turn into the men's restroom, we find another one. Could these be the remains of some of the adults that arrived here with the 82 children? We don't find another skeleton in the women's restroom. I'm surprised the kids have left these bones here for 200 years. That's it for the bathroom, so heading back outside, we see a sign pointing off to the north, Murder Pass. Oh, that sounds fun. We'll have to check that out in a minute. Heading west, we see a picnic table and another teddy bear on the ground we can loot for Marie. And then, McCready walks by. Okay, so you get in, but I got my eye on you. You don't make any trouble in here, got it? I ain't having no shit butts making trouble. I've heard a lot about the fungus in your cavern, and I'd like to make a deal. Yeah, I'll bet you've heard all about the fungus in my cavern. But yeah, the cave fungus, sure. It's good for food and medicine, and it's the main fucking reason we've stayed alive down here. So, you want a slice of that gray-green gold, huh? I think maybe we could come to an arrangement. What are you offering? Yeah, let me think about it, and I'll get back to you on that. Oh, what the fuck ever! Come back when you can make a decision! We could pass a speech check to say, Give me the fungus, or I'll seal this place underground, and you with it. Oh, is that how it's gonna be then? Well then, how's this deal? Rather than you wasting ex the explosives to try to close all of our exits just for us to bury out again, you get my private stash of fungus. Here. But I wouldn't expect much goodwill in town after this, you shit-sucking mungo bastard. <laughs> and we lose karma. Alternatively, we can pass a child at heart check to say, I bring in supplies you need, and I get some of the fungus in return. Well, and it'd lighten the load for our scab team a lot. Since you're pretty much one of us, here's the deal. For every piece of strange meat or buff out you bring in, you'll be repaid with one cube of fungus. You couldn't ask for a better deal. Talk with Eclair for the strange meat, or to Lucy about the buff out. They've got uses for them. All right, now that we have permission, we can head back to Lucy and exchange buff out for cave fungus. We can also exchange strange meat for the fungus with Eclair whenever we meet him. This is a bit disturbing since we know where strange meat comes from. What do these kids need strange meat for? Nearby, we see another kid, but she's just called a little lamplighter. She doesn't have anything Gosh, unique to say. Big. We'll see a lot of them running around. Climbing the stairs to the top of this shack, we see that the sign above it says, Lamplight Cavern Souvenir Shop. Following McCready inside, we find a boy behind the counter named Knickknack. You in town, huh? If McCready let you in, that's good enough for me. Well, enough of formalities. Who are you? And how'd you get McCready to let you in here? I'm from up above, so stay out of my way, kid. You don't have to be a jerk about it. In fact, if you got stuff from up above and you're looking to get rid of some of it, let me know. I'm Nick Knack, and I run the store down here. If you want to trade anything, come on by the souvenir store and we'll talk. Oh, I'm impressed by Nick Knack's maturity. Or we could say, the mayor let me in. I'm not here to cause any trouble. 
In that case, I'm Nick Knack, and I take care of the general store around here. Which is to say, I collect a lot of stuff, and sometimes trade it for other stuff. That's pretty much a store, see? Why do they call you Nick Knack? Well, my name was Nick, and I collect Nick Knacks. Not everything has to be real complex, see? I see. Hey, Nick Knack, can you repair anything for me? Sure, let me see that thing. And sadly, Nick Knack here only has a repair skill of 15. Not really worth our time. And if we have the child at heart perk, we can convince him to trade. Sure thing, pal. Special deals for us kids. He does have a weapon selection, but the most advanced weapon he can sell is a laser rifle. His apparel selection is pretty meager, though he does carry a radiation suit, and despite what they said about subsisting on cave fungus, he does have a collection of pre-war food for sale, and he sells a handful of stim packs. He has a lot of junk on his inventory, as well as schematics for the bottle cap mine, going for 300 caps. We'll go ahead and snag that to improve the schematics we already have. That's all for now, Nick Knack. Always a grab bag with my stuff, see? Come on back when you got more stuff to trade. The signs behind him are too worn by age to be able to read, though we do see a painted sign here. Nick Knacks, Nick Knacks. Nice. There are some shelves filled with ammunition canisters and a bunch of other stuff, but it's all marked as owned, so we can't loot any of it. But on a shelf to the north, we find two more diary entries. These are by Jason Grant. We'll start by listening to entry number one. Um, I guess this thing is working. I'm Jason Grant. I'm 10 years old. I'm in Miss Salami's class at Early Dawn Elementary. A month ago, a big war came and everything was destroyed. Except us. We're still okay in these caves. Kind of. Mrs. Delaney went out this morning to get help. And she never came back. But the other adults never came back either. So now it's just us kids. A lot of the others still cry every day. They're really scared. I'm not. There's nothing to be scared of as long as we don't go outside. Nobody else wants to be in charge, so I'm going to try. Most of the kids listen to me already, so it should be easy. So even Mrs. Delaney left. But if all the adults left, whose are the skeletons we found in the bathroom? We must conclude that some of them, at least, died. Listening to log number two. It's been almost two months, and we're all doing pretty good. Even if we are all alone. There's a door that leads to a vault, right here in the caverns. Every day, we bang and bang, but they won't let us in. We can hear them in there. One time, a guy on the other side told us we were dead already. Fuck those grown-ups. Fuck them all. We don't need them ever again. A vault? Wait, there's a vault here? And they wouldn't let the kids in? Oh, that's horrible. We'll have to keep an eye out to see if we can find it to learn what happened to those vault dwellers. As we're about to leave the souvenir shop, we get approached by Sticky. Wow, what luck! I'm Sticky. Forget these little kids. I'll take you to Big Town where the Mungos, I mean where the grown-ups live. I'm headed there now. Where the grown-ups live? Big Town. You've never heard of it? It's where all the grown-ups go. Well, at least when they grow up and out of little lamplight. I can show you the way. There's no reason to waste your time with a bunch of snot-nosed kids. Let's go now. Looks to me like you want someone to escort you to Big Town. Nah, I'm a grown-up now. I can handle myself. There's no reason to waste your time with the kiddies at Little Lamplight. They'll steal your caps when you aren't looking. So let's go to Big Town. I can show you the way. Look, I want to visit Little Lamplight first. Maybe later. Why would you want to visit a bunch of snot-nosed children? Wouldn't you rather go to Big Town? Of course you would! Come on, let's go! I can show you the way! You're on your own. I'm not interested in babysitting duty. I'm not a baby. I'm a grown-up. That's why I'm going to Big Town. Because I'm not a little kid anymore. So you see, I don't need you. Good luck with those kids. You're gonna need it. All right, fine. I'll take you to Big Town, but first, I need to visit Little Lamplight. I'm not allowed in Little Lamplight anymore. Only people under 18 get to live in Little Lamplight. So when you're done with those little kids, we can go to Big Town together. I'll wait outside for you. With that, he walks off to wait for us, but we can ask him a few more things. What's with the party hat? Oh, I forgot I had that on. It was for my birthday. Here, you take it. I don't want it anymore. And he gives it to us. It's just like the party hat from our 10th birthday. Where's Big Town located? It's east of Little Lamplight. Come on, let's go there. It's not that far away. We'll be there in no time. And he marks it on our map for us. We could take him right now, but instead, let's explore Lamplight Caverns first. I gotta go now, Sticky. 
Why won't you just take me to Big Town? And Sticky walks off towards the entrance to wait for us. Just then, a little lamplighter ran down the stairs, but then he ran under the shack. Following him, he dashes down the path towards Murder Pass. No, kid, you can't go to Murder Pass. That sounds horrible. Racing after him to save him from death, we arrive in a big room, and it's walled off. All right, nothing to worry about. Hey. Here, we find Princess. Hey, new kid, I don't know if anyone told you yet, but let me set the record straight. I'm Princess. When you're around me, I'm in charge. You shut up and do what I say because I'm boss around here. That clear? Now, who are you? Did you just try to give me orders? That's cute, princess. Oh, you'll listen to me. Otherwise, I'll have my good pal RJ kick you out of the town, or better yet, lock you in the vault. So don't push me, new meat. Just nod and move on, and I think we'll get along just fine. Whatever you say. Good, glad we got that settled. Stay out of my way and there won't be any problems. So what's it like? Guarding the back gate. It's so dull. Practically nothing ever tries to come through the back gate anymore, so I never get to shoot anyone. I wish I was at the front gate, but RJ specifically put me back here. Up front, at least there's a chance I can shoot some unwanted visitors. Which could have included you, Mungo? Shooting at me would have been a big mistake, kid. Oh really? That's a cute little imagination you've got. But if you want to play make-believe, maybe you should do it with the younger brats. Why would you have shot at me? Tch, <laughs> could have been a lot of reasons. Maybe you sounded like a monster in all that darkness. Maybe you had a weapon drawn and looked like a raider. Maybe I just decided I didn't like your stupid Mungo face. How did someone like you get a nickname like Princess? I don't need to explain myself to you, Mungo. Shut up and get lost. In fact, don't you ever bother me about something as stupid as nicknames again. All right, I'm leaving. You, uh... Get back to guarding. Well, thank goodness you gave me permission, jerk. Well, wasn't she a nice little ray of sunshine? I can see why they put her all the way back here. With an attitude like that, she won't last long in the wasteland as a mungo. The Fallout 3 official strategy guide tells us more about her backstory. Her real name is Angela, and when she was nine, she convinced everyone to make her the mayor. However, her first act as mayor was to change her own title to Princess. This made McCready so angry that he punched her in the nose and took charge. Ever since then, Princess has had a bit of a crush on McCready, and she's jealous of the fact that McCready spends more time with Lucy. But Murder Pass sounds really interesting. Let's see if we can head that way. The gate is closed, but heading up the stairs, we can peer over it. And on the other end, we see a door leading to Murder Pass. To open it, we can activate a nearby switch, but we can't use it at this time. We'll be able to activate the switch once we advance further along in the primary plot of Fallout 3. Since Murder Pass takes us out of Little Lamplight anyway, we'll save Murder Pass to cover in detail for an upcoming video. Turning around, we can head back to the souvenir shop. There's not much else here, but we do find another path leading west to the Great Chamber. Heading that way, we can open a door, and on the other side, we see a bunch of kids. First, we'll talk with Joseph. Well, here's something I don't see every day. A new face and Little Lamplight. A bit big for one of our kids but you seem all right. What's your story down here? I'm new. Get used to me. Well, if McCready let you in, I'm sure he's got his reasons. I'm Joseph, and as the oldest kid in the lamplight, I'm pretty much a teacher by default. I'm not sure if there's anything I can teach you, but if you need a haircut or the like, just say the word. Don't worry, I'm not gonna cause any trouble. I'm Joseph, and around here, I might as well be the old wise man. Try not to interrupt my classes, and I think we'll get along just fine. As the oldest kid in town, I spent most of my time teaching, but I do what I can to keep the kids clean and fresh-faced. If you're looking for a haircut, feel free to ask. I'll do what I can. So you're the teacher? What sort of education do the kids get here? Well, back at the start, all the children had were the notes from the grown-ups that hadn't left yet, and a few books on caves from the store. But after finding the vault, a few scavengers brought back holotapes for basic schooling, Reading, basic math, encyclopedias, that sort of thing. We don't get many books anymore from the scav team, but I make sure to keep my own notes on the computer for whoever takes over after I leave. So wait, did the vault eventually open their doors? Well, they must have. How else did the kids get the school books? What kind of things do you teach the kids? Mostly whatever they want to learn. 
We don't have strict classes or anything down here. But it does mean they're interested in what I'm teaching. But everyone learns the basics of fighting and shooting and survival. We've all got obvious reasons to be interested in that. How thorough are your teaching materials? We entered all of the books and holotapes into the computer, but frankly, there are a lot of important subjects the Volt's material didn't cover. I could wish for more, but we're probably still the best school in the Wasteland. Maybe the only school in the Wasteland, really. Well, all right, you mentioned haircuts earlier. Can I have a haircut? Certainly. How would you like to look? Andy works as a functional barber, but I like my hairstyle for now. I gotta go now, Joseph. Stay sharp. We can observe one of his lessons if we visit the schoolroom between 8 and 9 in the morning, but really his only student is Bumble. Um, can I ask something? Uncle Joseph, I still don't understand what outside's like. Can you explain more? Okay, Bumble. One more time. Outside of these caves, the world is hot, dry, and not very friendly. And there are monsters bigger than you or me. People don't have the same sort of safety and freedom to run around and play like you can here. They have to work hard for safety. There may be danger safety. here. Things outside are very dangerous indeed, and that's why we fight so hard to keep our little lamplight cavern safe and free. Hey! Understand, Bumble? Yes, sir. Next to Joseph is a kid dressed up like the lamplight mole mascot named Zip. Wow, you're big. I mean, bigger than most people down here. I mean, bigger than most people down here that we don't shoot for being down here. So how'd you get down here without getting shot? Am I supposed to shoot you? Because you know, I'd rather not. But if I'm supposed to, then okay. Beat it, kid, you bother me. But wait, you don't even know who I am yet. No, you don't need to shoot at me. Just think of me as a big kid. That's good. They don't like me having my gun in town, so I gotta turn it in first. So if I had to shoot you, you'd have to wait a bit. My name's Zip. I don't think that's short for anything. Because I don't know what it'd be short for. Zippy, Zipperick, Zipthoamu. So yeah, it's good to meet you, big kid. Maybe you've got big stuff on top of you. Do you have any Nuka-Cola, maybe? Yes? Please? Why are you called Zip? Why Zip? Or why do I have a nickname at all? I mean, why don't people just call me Ricky, or Yancey, or Eustace P. Vanderbagger the third? I mean, they say it's because I'm so fast, but that doesn't make sense because I don't think I'm all that fast. It's just that they're all slow. I guess it's just one of those mysteries that will never really get answered, sort of like how people made bubbles in Nuka-Cola. Say, got any cola? <laughs> uh, you said you were looking for Nuka-Cola? Yeah, more Nuka's always good. It's definitely always gooder than less, because no Nuka's no good at all. Got any Nuka for me? I'll trade you whatever I got for more Nuka Cola anytime. You can for zip. You can for zip. Well, what have you got to trade for a bottle of Nuka Cola? Well, I didn't want to trade it, but I got the stem pack Lucy said I'm supposed to carry with me. Is it worth a Nuka? Sounds like a good trade to me. Here. Yay! Nuka Cola, Nuka Cola makes the stomach bubbly in the world so jumbly. Yay! <laughs> Is that a real pre war advertising song, or did he just make that up? Either way, I'm impressed. We can trade one Nuka-Cola with Zip every 24 hours, and the items he has available for trade change. Sometimes he even trades ammunition. This time he had some 10 mil for me. All right, Zip, I'm going away. You stay here, away from me. Okay, see you next time, miss. The Fallout 3 strategy guide tells us that his real name is Ricky, and he's not allowed to keep a weapon in the caves because of that accident that one time. Joseph and Zip run off, and we can continue on our way what? to the Great Chamber. At last, we reach a huge room with stalactites hanging from the ceiling. Here we see a city of shacks clinging to the sides of rock formations and connected by a network of ramps and bridges that crisscross throughout the Great Chamber. We see these iridescent balls glowing inside fishnets. Not sure exactly what's inside those balls, and I'm kind of afraid to ask. There are a bewildering number of ways to move forward. We see a ramp going down to the ground, a path off to the south, but we'll start by taking this rope bridge to the northwest. We see more little lamplighters running this way and that. The bridge ends at a rock formation. We'll turn right for now. Here we pass another German Shepherd, Pete, and we see a ramp made from rope and plywood off to the right. At the top, we find a small shack and a child sleeping in bed. This is Knock Knock. New in town, huh? Well, if McCready let you in, that's a good sign. I'm Knock Knock, and I take care of keeping the peace down here. Or at least the morale. So who are you? You going to cause any trouble? I'm from up above. Stay out of my way, kid. Being a jerk about it isn't necessary. In fact, if you've got any interesting stories from up there, and you're looking to tell them, let me know. I'm 
knock knock. And I keep people's spirits up down here. If you want to trade jokes, just knock knock on my door. <laughs> I'm impressed how some of these kids react to the lone wanderer being rude. Alternatively, we can be polite and say, the mayor let me in. I'm not here to cause any trouble. Always good to hear, but not even any fun trouble? Even a little? See, I collect a lot of stories, and sometimes trade them to keep the others amused. A bit of fun trouble is always good for morale. More owls better than less owls, see? You said you were in charge of morale. What does that mean? Well, technically, I'm patrolling and keeping the peace. Mostly, that involves making sure people are happy and not getting into trouble. You can't very well keep the peace if you've already lost it, see? So, bam! Jokes! Wanna hear one? She doesn't take no for an answer. She tells us the joke no matter what we choose here. So we'll say, sure, let's hear one. Prepare to be amused. Knock, knock. And if we choose not to play along, she continues to tell the joke. So we'll play along and say, who's there? Noah. We get a similar response if we say, Noah who? Or pass an intelligence check to say, Noah place where you can get some better jokes. Hey, that's good. I was just going to say, Noah place where I can get some food. We can say, that couldn't have been a joke. Jokes are supposed to be funny. I know they aren't very funny, but that was a bit uncalled for. Most of them came from a book we found long ago in the vault. Vault Boy's Big Book of Laughs for Kids. They're pretty dumb, but we all know them. And they're just kind of comforting. Sort of familiar, see? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's only because you haven't heard all of the jokes from the book. Like this gem. What's big and red and beats rocks? A big red rock beater. Seriously. See, now that's the dumbest thing you've ever heard. Or we can say, that was hysterical. Whoa, you really think so? Like, actually funny? Can you convince other folks to find them funny? Or we can pass a speech check to lie and say, that was, um, really funny. Gee, thanks. I have to admit, most of them aren't really funny. At least not ha-ha funny. Why don't you come up with new jokes or stories to tell? Oh, we've got lots of funny incidents. Like when Sammy shot the raider who thought he was a girl. That sort of stuff. But we don't really get a lot of news stories from outside. The scav teams spend all their time hidden, so they don't get much news, see? I'd sure like to hear more tales from the great big outdoors myself. Actually, if you hear any, feel free to tell me. My stories are my own business. Well, if you say so. But if you're ever looking for an audience, just let me know. I bet the town would love to hear them, too. Or we can say, I've got a tale to tell. Oh, really? Tell me about it. We can tell her our tale in one of three ways. We can tell it like a horror story and say, Long ago, my people were buried away. Now, I've arisen to terrorize the wastes. A horror story, huh? So you are here to terrorize evil? Or is it more a generalized sort of terrorizing? I mean, you wouldn't do anything to hurt someone who was faithfully telling your tale, right? Would you? So, um, whatever happens next, it's nothing bad to me, right? Or we can say, I left my dull life behind to search for fame and adventure in the wasteland. (laughs) Wow, that sounds like it took some guts. Life down here might get dull, but I gotta admit, at least I don't get shot at. Well, not as much anyway. Tell me more. What's happened since then? Or we can say, not long ago, my father left me, so I went searching for him. So you're like a three-legged dog then? Looking for your lost paw? (laughs) Anyway, what happened next? We can only unlock new portions of our own story to tell to Knock Knock as we further complete the main plot of the game. Since we haven't gotten that far yet, and relaying them here would be a spoiler, I'm going to have to skip them for now. We'll have to come back to Knock Knock to finish telling her our story. If we don't have a complete story to tell her, we can say one of two things. We can say, you'll have to wait. Story time's over for now. Oh, come on. Please, I promise not to interrupt. Well, if you feel like telling me more, you know where to find me. Or we can say, I'd tell you more, but I'm still working on how it ends. That makes sense, I suppose. A good story can take a while to put together, you know. Why are you called Knock Knock? Well, when people started calling Nicky by his new name, I needed one too, see? If you're twins, it just doesn't cut it to be called Nick Knack and Sue. 
No matter which type of story we choose to tell her, the good, neutral, or evil versions of our story, she begins to repeat it to all of the other children in Little Amplight. Turning back and following the bridge to the northwest, we find a no standing or stopping sign right next to a shelf with ammunition boxes that we can loot without stealing. The bridge continues to the southwest, but let's veer off, taking this path to the northeast. This brings us to another split, left or right. We'll start by going left. Here we find another split. Taking the right path brings us up to the cave's billiard room. We see a billiard table on this platform surrounded by no speeding signs, a stop sign, and a garden gnome. And balanced precariously on the edge of the billiard table is a holotape. January 26th, 2077. Little Lamplight. We've been in here for three months now, and it's way better than it used to be. Who says kids can't take care of themselves? Jason has done a really good job keeping everyone busy. He says if we want to survive, we need to work together and work hard. A few of the kids have started saying, we're like a whole new city, a city of kids. They call it Little Lamplight. It's so cool. All of us voted in secret, and tomorrow we're going to tell Jason that he's the city's first mayor. He's going to be so happy with us. So Jason was the first mayor. It's likely he, then, that originated the idea of exiling children once they grew too old. I guess then that he suffered the same fate as Sticky and was exiled to the wastes. I wonder how many of these little lamplighters became raiders over time. Heading back and continuing to the right, we find a little bit of a workshop. There's a mattress on the ground right next to a work desk, and on the lower shelf we find a bottle cap mine. Turning around and retracing our steps, we can this time follow the path to the east. This wraps around a rock column, ending at two paths, a ramp down to the ground or a bridge off to the north. Going north first, we see that this leads to a rocky path that splits, a path to the west and a path to the north. We'll go north for now. Here we see a bunch of junk, barrels, ruined beds, lockers lying about. And exploring further, we see a sign that says nothing. Oh, well, in that case, I'll just head back. Or rather, pushing forward, we find a sandwich board on the ground that says, Keep out, not part of tour. And it has the vault tech symbol. So there is a vault back here. We see a ruined fence that was blocking this off, but it has since been moved aside by the kids. Walking inside, we see a large chamber with an elevated structure off to the northwest. We see all sorts of pipes and conduits snaking from beneath this thing, which means it is connected to a vault deeper into the earth. Heading around to the eastern side, we see a staircase leading in through a door. And here we find a vault reactor. We see puddles of blood trailing to a door against the western wall. Examining the door, we can't open it. It requires a key. And we see that this vault is Vault 87. Just outside, there's an average locked computer terminal, but when we try to hack it, it says the terminal is not powered, even though it is flickering. <laughs> well, we'll have to come back to explore Vault 87 when we progress further into the primary plot of the game. And at that time, we'll be sure to give Zip some more cola and tell Knock Knock the rest of our story. Retracing our steps, we can head back towards the rope bridge and this time take the path in the rock to the west, but this just leads to a dead end. So heading back to the rope bridge, our only path forward is to go down to the ground. We see a little beach down here, but there isn't much to see. There is a ramp leading into the water, but the water's pretty empty. We do find a hole boring deep into the cave floor, but swimming all the way down, there's not much to learn down here. So hopping back out, we can explore the rest of the ground floor of the Great Chamber. There's a junk pile off to the northwest with still burning barrels. We see the remains of a playground. Not sure why the kids don't play with this anymore. And a ramp leading back up to the city. Heading back up, we can explore the other paths we missed. Turning right, the path goes east, and we'll see a storage shack to the right. Hey. But here we just find a toolbox and a bed behind a sandbag barricade. And continuing to the right brings us back to the Lone Wanderer motorcycle we first saw upon entering from the souvenir shop. So turning around, we can walk across that final bridge that was right next to the shelf filled with ammunition. Safe. This leads to a little alcove in the cave with the bed upon which is sleeping a boy named Bowie. Hello, I'm Billy. Welcome to Little Lamplight. Hey, you look like you're handy with the weapon. I got kicked off the scab team, so I guess I don't need mine anymore. 
Want to buy my Wazer Wifel? Five hundred caps, and it's all yours. Stop talking like that. No one thinks it's cute. Talking like what? You're weird. Five hundred for a kid's toy? No way. Okay, it's your loss. Maybe I'll regret this, but how did you get your nickname, Billy? Nickname? What are you talking about? You said that you were selling your Wazer Wifel? I sure did. Five hundred caps, and this Wazer Wifel's all yours. We could pay the five hundred caps, or pass a child at heart check to say, how about giving it to a fellow kid like me? That's a great idea. You take it, and good work out there. With that, Billy gives us the Wazer Wifel. The Wazer Wifel is the best laser rifle in the vanilla game. It's beaten by the Metal Blaster from the Pit DLC and the Tribeam Laser Rifle from Broken Steel. But it's much better compared to the typical laser rifle, dealing 29 damage compared to a laser rifle's 25. It also does 6 more points of critical damage, 28 compared to 22, bringing its DPS up to 59.3. It also has a much larger ammo capacity, 30 compared to a laser rifle's 24. And its durability is almost 500 greater than a typical laser rifle. With that, we've fully explored the Great Chamber. We can now follow the bridge to the southern side of the chamber and follow the signs pointing to Spelunkers. This path ends with a door leading to a flooded chamber. The children have built floating platforms in this pool, and to the left, we find a boy in a top hat just laying down for a snooze. There's a bar here where we find some cave fungus that we can loot without stealing, and to the east, we find a shelf filled with more ammunition boxes that again we can loot without stealing. If we're feeling hungry, we can wake a Claire from his nap. Great. RJ let in another pair of choppers to eat up all our food. Well, as long as you don't give me any crap about how I prepare your grub, I guess you'll be okay. So tell me, what do you think of cave fungus and watery mushroom sauce? He calls Mayor McCready RJ here because as we learn from Fallout 4, his full name is Robert Joseph McCready. Both of these options require the child at heart perk. We can say, I'd rather eat a Brahmin turd sandwich with no bread. You got that right. After our regular meals, I bet some of us would give that a shot. If we had a Brahmin down here, that is. Listen, my name's Eclair. Don't laugh. And I'm in charge of the food down here. We haven't got much, but I do what I can to spice it up. If you need a meal down here, just talk with me. You'll hardly even know you're eating cave mold. Or we can say, mmm, that sounds delicious. Okay, either you're a dirty liar or you're some sort of freak. Either way, you should fit in just fine around here. Folks call me a Claire, and I'm in charge of keeping this place fed. You need a meal? You come ask me. There's not much to go around, and it all tastes bad. It'll keep you alive, and that's good enough. Where do you get food for this place? Honestly, when we can't scavenge some from outside, we mostly scrape it off the walls and skim it off the water. No, really. Most of our food comes from fungus that grows in these caves. It's not so bad when you get used to it, and we don't have much choice. At least it's filling, so we don't have to eat much of it. But man, oh man, it tastes terrible! Where does the fungus come from? It's pretty hard to find, and I hear it doesn't grow in other caves. I don't know why it's here, but without it, we'd be goners. Think fungus just grows on trees? No, it grows in caves! Ugh! Knock Knock came up with that one once, and now it's stuck in my head forever! Doesn't take any work to get it to grow down here. All I have to do is collect and prepare it. Mostly, I try to get the stink off it. How does the fungus grow? They say the fungus grows in the pools where the first lamplighters sent the mungos. That's about the most they ever helped us. I don't know how true that is, but I know sometimes the scav team comes back with this strange meat that tastes terrible, but the fungus loves it! I don't know where they find that meat, but if you could bring some back, I'd be glad to trade fungus for it. Of course, McCready'd have to okay it. We've already got permission from McCready, so I guess we'll have to keep our eyes open for strange meat. And it's clear from this dialogue that the cave fungus feeds on human corpses. For some reason, the adults that came here to Little Lamplight with the 82 children all died long before the kids, except for the ones who abandoned them by heading out into the wasteland. The kids dumped their bodies in this water where they rotted, feeding the cave mold. And that is why he needs strange meat. Because as we know, strange meat is really human flesh. So why are you called Eclair? 
Well, I didn't get the nickname for being fat and full of cream, if that's what you're asking. Back when I was on the scav team, I found some pages from an old cookbook. Sometimes I'll try them out. Just for the record, don't try making an eclair out of cave fungus. The taste sticks with you, and not in a good way. We can pass a child at heart check to say, I'd like some food. Bon appetit! And despite going on and on about the cave fungus, he doesn't have any for sale. He's got plenty of pre-war food. He even sells wild punga fruit from the Point Lookout DLC, but he doesn't sell cave fungus. So our only options is to trade for it with Strange Meter Buff Out. All right, Eclair, I'll let you get back to your food. About time, man. This mold isn't getting any tastier. After learning that the kids dumped the bodies of the adults in this water, I took a dive to see if I could find any evidence of this, but after exploring every nook, I didn't find a single skeleton. So either he is mistaken, or even the bones have long rotted away, being consumed by whatever bacteria feeds the cave fungus. When done exploring, we can exit Spelunkers, their restaurant, by walking up the path to the northeast. And this brings us all the way back to the entrance, where we found the signs pointing us deeper on. On our way out, we bump into Lucy. I got permission from McCready, so I'd like to trade some buff out for cave fungus. Excellent. I should be able to synthesize the proteins from this into something that'll fight rickets. Here's your fungus in return. And with that, we get some cave fungus. Cave Fungus heals five hit points, or six with the food sanitizer we got from Moira Brown, and removes 10 radiation. This makes Cave Fungus one of only three foods that can remove radiation. The other two coming from the Point Lookout DLC, Wild Punga Fruit and Refined Punga Fruit. Hey. That makes it a pretty decent consumable, but because it's so rare, we have to trade strange meat or buff out for it, both of which are fairly rare in their own right, it's worth 50 caps, making it the most valuable food item in the game, which hey. makes a lot of sense. It only grows here in Lamplight Caverns. After resting up for the night, we can leave Little Lamplight, and on our way out... You want to go to Big Town? Of course you do! Oh, that's right. I said I'd escort this guy, didn't I? All right, let's go to Big Town. All right, yeah! Big Town, here we come! Well, considering this kid spent all of his youth in the cave, he probably doesn't have any weapons. We should go ahead and arm him first. We find an option to say, you're gonna need a weapon if you want to live to see Big Town. Oh, wow, cool. What have you got for me? Minigun? Flamer? Maybe a missile launcher? Or maybe we just give him a laser pistol and a little bit of ammunition to go with it. That should keep him safe. Okay, Sticky, enough chit-chat. Come on, let's hurry up and get to Big Town. And with that, we fully explore Lamplight Cavern and can start on our trip to... Are we there yet? Really? Really, guy? As I was saying, we can start on our trip to Big Town. Sticky proves to be an interesting temporary companion. We'll fully explore the joys of traveling with this young man in our next episode all about Big Town. I publish many new videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Who's a good boy? It's everyone's favorite German Shepherd. You can find him on t-shirts in a variety of both men's and women's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can also find him on a bunch of other products as well. Smartphone cases, mugs, pillows, posters, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon this week with a brand new video. Let's make up a story to pass the time. Once upon a time, there was this dog. His name was Super Duke Dave, and he went all around rescuing people from super mutants and slavers and, and other nasty things. I've got one! Ah. Flag Where? Keep them safe! Never!